subscribe now and press the bell icon. Never miss an update. Hello and welcome to Health Live at Seniors today. We are delighted to have here with us Dr. Ramesh Sareen. And the topic of the discussion is breast cancer and cancer care for seniors. Dr. Sareen is a senior consultant in surgical oncology at the Apollo Cancer Centers. And she's based in New Delhi and she specializes in breast oncology. She's a former professor of surgery at Ames. In fact, I was speaking to her a little while back and she says she was perhaps among the first few batches uh, uh, of graduates from Ames. And she's a fellow Memorial Sloan Kettering uh, Cancer Center in the US. As I mentioned, her areas of specialization include uh, 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 breast oncology, which is breast uh, conservative surgery with oncoplasty, sentinel lymph node biopsy in both pre and post, neo adjuvant chemotherapy, breast reconstruction, benign breast diseases. Um, she also, other than being with Apollo Hospital for all these years, she uh, is a leading member of the uh, uh, over a decade old NGO called the Forum for Breast Cancer Protection. Welcome to Health Live at Seniors Today, Dr. Sareen. Thank you, uh, Mr. Pradyuman uh, Maheshwari. Uh, just a few words. Uh, I like to congratulate the organization that you have started, Senior Today. And I was really impressed that you have a lakh and a half members over the last two years, which is a great effort, you know. And um, and, and I'm so happy that you created this group. You know, um, if we cannot look after them physically, at least uh, on the net, you can empower them with knowledge, information, how to look after your physical and spiritual health, which is so important. And we all need to meet, you know, social life is so important, especially for the senior people. And I'm happy to be contributing in a small way, um, in a small way about breast cancer awareness. Um, I am a specialist in breast cancer awareness. And what I have done is to show you a film that our NGO has made. It's a groundbreaking film. So instead of showing you the slides and giving you a didactic lecture, you will be engaged in seeing that film. The film shows you all the signs and symptoms of early breast cancer. And what I just, before I show you the film, uh, I would like you to ask me questions if you don't understand anything about the signs and symptoms or anything about breast cancer or in general about other cancers also, you can ask me. Uh, before I show you the film, uh, I'll just tell you, and I congratulate again, Dr. Mr. Maheshwari for putting this topic up for your information. And it's important that this topic is being discussed today. Breast cancer is the commonest cancer among females in India. Like 30% of all cancers that happens in the body belong to the breast cancer. And breast cancer can be diagnosed early, unlike stomach or gallbladder or liver, which there is no test to diagnose it early. Breast cancer, if diagnosed early, can be cured in more than 90%. So you can live a normal life in 90% of the times if it is diagnosed early. Provided you know the early signs and symptoms, and today we are going to tell you that. Uh, much the maximum research in America has been done in breast cancer because there also the commonest cancer is breast cancer in females. And the females lobby is so strong. So they are pushing the scientists to find a cure, 100% cure for breast cancer. So if we, and you know, today with the internet, uh, we have the knowledge what's happening over there. So right here, as you all know, good treatment is available, provided you make an effort to look at yourself 
and know, have the knowledge about early signs and symptoms, which your event organizer or your chairperson is doing today. And I'm so happy about it. So we'll start and show you the films without much ado. And then please ask me the questions. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, those of you who have questions, as always, please put them in the Q&A tab. You can ask the question anonymously. You don't have to give your name, but do mention uh, the age uh, of, the, uh, of, of the patient or whoever you are speaking about, uh, or if it is yourself, do mention the age so that uh, Dr. Ramesh Sareen could give a considered response. But uh, feel free, we will not, even if you are not able to send the question anonymously, we will not take any names of any person who has asked the question today. Just because the topic is such and in deference to people's wishes, because you know people don't want to be known or, or don't want to want, want their names to be revealed, uh, we will not take any names of anybody who asks questions today. Um, over, uh, let, let's, watch, let's watch the film. When they told me I had breast cancer, I kept telling myself they've made a mistake. I was in such good health. How could I have breast cancer? When I came to know that I have breast cancer, my whole world came crashing down. I thought I was near my death. I was 29 years old, in a very good health, with no family history of cancer, and then I was told that I had breast cancer. It can happen to anyone at any age. The bad news is that anybody can get breast cancer. The good news is that if detected early, it is fully curable. Hi everyone, welcome to our discussion on breast cancer. My name is Colonel Pan. I'm a breast radiologist. Let me introduce you to the other members of my panel. Dr. Mrs. Sarin, a renowned breast surgeon. We have uh, Dr. Bhavna, who is a clinical oncologist with a special interest in breast cancer. We have uh, uh, Charming Dipali, who is in her 40s, a lot like you. Sorry, Dipali, I revealed your age. She's most reluctant to get herself uh, screened for breast cancer. But Dr. Panth, where is the need? I've heard that breast cancer happens to only those people whose mothers or grandmothers suffered from it too. Nobody in my family has it, thank goodness. So why do I need to go for screening? Family history is only one of the risk factors of Dipali. Age is another big risk factor. Women above the age of 50 are at a higher risk. In addition, if you had had your children after the age of 30 or never had children, or if you haven't breastfed your children, your chances of getting breast cancer are higher. If you also started your periods before the age of 12 or if you had your period stopping after the age of 54, or if you have taken postmenopausal hormone, you are at a greater risk. Research has also shown a link between diet, physical inactivity, and obesity. What is even more worrying is that most women who develop breast cancer do not have any of these risk factors. Many women who develop breast cancer would have no family history of breast cancer. In fact, no woman can ever be sure that she can never develop breast cancer. But one thing is certain, that breast cancer is rising in India, especially in urban India. One study shows that one out of 25 women in their lifetime will develop breast cancer. As per WHO prediction, by 2020, India will catch up with their Western counterpart, wherein one in eight women will develop a breast cancer in a lifetime, which is a very scary scene. But let me stress the fact that early detection is the key to a possible cure. That is why we ask women above the age of 30 to get themselves screened regularly. Well, maybe, but I only go to a doctor when there's something wrong with me. At least we can ask you to do a breast self-examination. A self-exam? How does one do it? Let us show you through the clip. Breast self-examination. Observing the breasts. First, stand in front of a mirror so that you can see at least up to your neck and down to your waist. 
Now, keeping your hands on your hips, look at the size and shape of each breast. If you notice any changes, you need to consult a doctor. But do remember that it is not unusual for one breast to be larger than the other. Look also for any puckering, dimpling or any other changes in your skin. Now look at your nipples. Is there any change in the position of either nipple? Also look for any retraction of the nipples or discharge from them. If you have large breasts, lift them up slightly to examine them underneath. Again, look for any changes in the skin here. Now raise your arms over your head and look for similar skin and nipple changes. Continue the examination with your hands clasped behind your neck, pressing them forward and tightening your chest muscles. Finally, place your hands on your hips, press down and in and look again for any changes in your nipples and skin. Feeling the breasts. Lie down and place a folded towel under your shoulder on the side you are going to examine first. Raise your arm under which you have placed the towel. You may find it most comfortable to place your hand under your head. The area you will examine includes not only your breast but also the area up to your collarbone as well as below your breast, across to the breastbone and over to your armpit. Using the pads of your first three fingers, begin to examine your breast using a series of small circular motions, each about the size of a rupee coin. You should use three levels of pressure, light, medium and firm. This way you can feel the different layers of breast tissue. Using this technique, trace a series of vertical strips moving from the collarbone to below the breast and back up again in zigzags until you cover the entire area. You may also use a technique where you trace a series of concentric circles towards your nipple or a method where you cover the area through a series of wedges. Use the pattern that you are most comfortable with. But the most important thing is to cover the entire area of the breast. Also squeeze the nipple gently and see if there is any discharge. If there is any discharge, please see your doctor. Now repeat the entire process on your other side by placing the folded towel under the opposite shoulder. Okay, that didn't seem so difficult. Not difficult at all, Dipali, but you need to know how to do it correctly and effectively. Get the feel of your normal breast and then look for abnormalities. And if you find any change in the shape of your breast, any skin discoloration, any lump or thickening in your breast or underarm, or any changes in the shape of your nipple like puckering, retraction or nipple discharge, you must see your doctor immediately. Now, a self-exam needs to be done regularly after the age of 20. After the age of 30, in addition to this, you need to get a clinical breast examination done by a doctor. Oh yes, my cousin said she gets a gynae to check her breasts. Exactly, the doctor is more likely to pick up an abnormality if there is one. So do I need both a self-exam and a clinical exam? A self-exam once a month and a clinical exam once a year, that's all. But after the age of 40, women have to be extra careful because with rising age, their risk increases. That's right. That's when you need a regular mammogram. Oh God, I've heard mammograms are really painful. A friend of mine was saying that your breast gets squashed so badly, it hurts horribly. Did your friend say this after getting her mammogram done? Well, no, she had also heard about it. Well, Dipali, I get regular mammograms done. And I can assure you, it's painless. Some women may feel little discomfort, but the thousands of women who have undergone mammography in my clinic never ever complain of pain, let alone acute pain. It is advisable to get your mammogram done a few days after your periods. So what happens in a mammogram? The body, this is just an X-ray of the breast, which we do with the help of a specially designed machine to do that. A mammogram can pick up a tumor much before it can be felt. It also shows few deposition of calcium, which we use the word microcalcification, which is also an indicator of early breast cancer. 
but this mammogram must be interpreted by a trained radiologist only. That looks like a lot of radiation. Isn't that itself a cancer risk? That's a complete myth. The risk from radiation is negligible. Dipali, the studies have shown that all of us are exposed to background radiation, which is equivalent to four mammograms a year. The benefits of an annual mammogram far outweigh the risks associated with it. In some cases, mammography is not clear enough. That happens usually in a younger woman or women having a dense breast. In these cases, we also do an ultrasound. And if a lump is found, it may require a biopsy. This is done by extracting a piece of tissue using a needle put into the lump. And this is called a fine needle aspiration or a needle biopsy. That needle procedure looked really painful. It's only a needle prick, my dear, and it can save your life. All these tests have only one aim, early detection. You know, I feel so scared to get a mammogram done in case the doctor says I have cancer. So you live in denial. That's not a sensible approach, Dipali. Dipali, let me assure you that nine out of 10 lumps are non-cancerous, but we have to make sure about it. And even if the diagnosis is cancer, early detection and treatment can save your life. You know, I've heard people say that cancer is painless, but the treatment kills you. That's not correct. Why don't we ask some women who have had the first-hand experience of it all? During chemotherapy, I had nausea, diarrhea, weakness. I also lost my hair. But it all passes. I got my hair back. This is my own hair. And the best thing is, I'm alive. I lead a normal life, a happy and a healthy life. I was lucky. I went for my mammogram, and my tumor was detected at a very early stage. I didn't need chemotherapy. My breast was saved. And I was in the hospital just for one day. My only regret is I did not do a self-examination or any form of screening. By the time I was diagnosed, it was late. I had to lose a breast. I had to go through chemotherapy and radiation. The doctor says, had I been diagnosed earlier, I could have saved the breast. I might not have had to go through chemotherapy or radiation. But look, I'm alive, happy, and enjoying my life. I would like to spread a message that every woman should go for early screening. As I said, Due to late detection, I had to lose a breast. But that's not the end of the world. I went in for a breast reconstruction surgery. And believe me, after that, my body is absolutely normal the way it was earlier. I have a new breast. Wow, these women are so brave. I thought breast cancer was a death sentence. Absolutely not. Breast cancer is one of the most curable forms of cancer. Medical science has progressed hugely and research is ongoing to find out better ways to treat breast cancer. And in early cases, which are diagnosed by a screening mammogram and with the correct treatment, the cure rate is over 90%. And today, the treatment is quite patient friendly. The patient needs to come to the hospital only for surgery, which also may not be in the form of a mastectomy. Chemotherapy and radiation are done as outpatient procedures. They come to the hospital, receive treatment, and go back home or go to work. And the best treatment is available right here in India. Is there any way of reducing my chances of getting breast cancer? You can reduce your risk by improving your lifestyle. And how can I do that, doctor? by maintaining a normal weight, eating a healthy diet, and regular exercise. Some risk factors are obesity, a diet rich in fats, and sitting around with no exercise. Junk food is definitely bad for you, even from the cancer perspective. If possible, women should marry and have their babies before the age of 30. Today, a lot of women delay marriage as well as motherhood in order to pursue a career. It's quite possible to enjoy motherhood as well as a good career. Research has shown that certain plant essences can help prevent or regress breast cancer. You can find them in carrots, yellow and orange fruit, tomatoes, watermelon, guava, 
green and black tea, cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, flaxseed and soya. Eat lots of fresh fruit and vegetables and exercise every day, my dear. Uh, well, Dr. Pant, I will do the self-exam, go for the clinical exam and mammogram. That lady said she wished her cancer had been detected early, then she would have been spared so much of pain. That really makes me think. Remember, breast self-examination once a month after the age of 20, clinical examination once a year after the age of 30, mammogram once in two years after the age of 40, and once a year after the age of 50. And then you can hope to live up to 90. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad we had this discussion. Early detection is now my mantra, and I'm going to spread this mantra to my women friends and family members. Excellent. Let me do a quick recap. Breast health examination, clinical examination, and mammogram. Please remember, even if you don't have those known risk factors, you can still contract this disease. And maintain your normal weight, eat lots of fresh fruits and vegetables, and exercise daily. Talk about it. Don't feel shy. And that's how together we can beat breast cancer. I went through the intensive treatment, but as you can see, I'm leading a healthy and a happier life today. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sareen. I, you know, when you spoke to me about the fact that this may be a better way to explain things, I, was very, I wasn't very sure, but I do, do agree the video was excellent and uh, a, a, a much better way to, uh, you know, send home the message than, uh, uh, you know, a, a slideshow. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Maheshwari. Uh, we couldn't have done without showing the breast, but instead of showing actual patients, this is a model, you know. So it is not that embarrassing, but at the same time, as we said last, don't be shy about it. Discuss about it. Why breast cancer happens to a woman, sometimes even to men, nobody knows, only God knows. Apart from 5 to 10% where we know you can get the gene from the mother, 90% of the time we do not know why it happens. It's just your bad luck. And if, you if you're the one chosen by the God, then we must look after ourselves. You know, wo kehte na, apna dhyan to rakhna chahiye na. Aap kaho ke sara dhyan bhagwan hi rakhega hum. And the car will swirl around us. That's not possible. So I think that's exactly what you're doing, giving them the knowledge and the empowerment to look after their health. And I'm so happy. 8th March is International Women's Day, which means International Empowerment Day. And this is just coming a week before absolutely, that. Absolutely, ma'am. And which is why we wanted you uh, uh, to be there this week so that much before all the various activities around uh, uh, Women's Day start, uh, we, have a, we have a question from um, Anita Java. Can we have a link to the film? Uh, Anita Ji, the thing is that this, as always, we will have the, uh, the video that is Dr. Sareen speaking to us uh, on Seniors Today 
the website. It will be there on Monday with the takeaways. And as always, the takeaways is written by a recognized, uh, by, by a qualified doctor. And um, so we will be capturing that and that will be there on seniorstudy.in on Monday. So you will get to see the film also as over there. Uh, before anything else, uh, uh, Dr. Sareen, I also overheard you saying that this film is also there in Hindi. In Hindi? Yes, yes, that's right. No, so at that's some point of time, perhaps yes. at a later date, if we yes. would be sure. uh, we would be happy to also conduct this session in Hindi because I think clearly the more people get the message, the better it is. And uh, you know, we would like to do that. Uh, Doctor, can I take a few questions? Yes, please. So my first question is um, about, uh, you know, something that you mentioned about, um, can breast cancer also happen to men? Yes, exactly. Uh, breast cancer can happen to men, but the incidence or the rate is only 1% of the females. If 100 females have the breast cancer, I will see one man with the breast cancer. So let's say if I have seen 2000 women by now, I would have about seen about 10 or 15 males with breast cancer. So the males should also look at their breast. And when you're having a bath, just put your hand you know, on the chest a little bit more carefully to see if there's any lump. If there's any lump, we, you know, sometimes you have bilateral breast hyperplasia, you know, all these uh, people who exercise and are six apps, they make their breast, you know, but that's separate. That's bilateral, bigger breast. But if you find one size bigger and you feel for feel it and you find a lump, you could have a breast cancer, but the risk is much lower. Right. So that's a good question. Hmm. Thank you. And so the, in terms of, you know, this, just as you have mammograms, etc. for women, is there, apart from self-examination, is there, is there a mammogram also for men? And no, it's not advisable. The, um, the mammograms uh, are screening. Screening means even if you don't have any lumps or bumps, you should go for screening mammograms because we can find out three millimeter, four millimeter lump in a mammogram than with the hand examination. And the screenings are advisable if they are cost effective. If the amount of money you're spending on females if the fayda is jada, if your advantages are more, then we spend that money. But in males, it's not cost effective because you know the risk is one in two thousand five hundred or one in three thousand men. So it's not it's not needed. Just feeling for the breast. Right. Thank you. We have another question, and as I mentioned, that you know. Uh, we are asking all questions anonymously. Uh, the question is, are there any side effects for the various, <coughs> sorry, I'll repeat. Are there any side effects for the various treatments that, that exist? Um, So-called for early diagnosis, if you're diagnosed early, which is like lump of less than two centimeter, or less than three centimeter, uh, the, you know, breast self-examination or just feeling for your breast, just look at your breast in the mirror. This is for the females, just look at your breast in the, in the mirror after a bath or before a bath, you know, don't be shy of it. I mean, we keep telling it's a beautiful part of you. There is no reason to be shy of it. And if you have a lump, please tell your partners, tell your children that you feel there is some thickening or there is some lump. It's not a crime. It's not a guilt to get a breast cancer because we don't know the cause. You've done nothing wrong. 
you know, we get females and they feel maybe if they had more than one partner, they feel guilty. Is it because we had many partners or is it because we had no sex or we had too much of sex? So they all feel guilty about it, but there's nothing to be feel guilty about it. It's something that the cells just go bizarre, you know. And as we said, the preventive thing is the diet, the physical activity that I'm sure you have already done seminars on. You will be doing seminars on. There's a lot of importance of diet, physical exercise, and no obesity in preventing many other diseases. So breast cancer is one of them. The rest of the things we can't prevent, you know, as we said, family history and having your early periods and late periods. So, so nothing to feel shy about it. So breast examination doesn't give you any side effects. Doctor's examination, doctor is just feeling it. So no side effects. The mammograms, as we have discussed, uh, causes no radiation. If you travel from Delhi to Bombay by air, your radiation is four times than the radiation in one mammogram. So, you know, you don't stop traveling. So please, uh, you know, it's, it's not a risk factor. Just the cost of doing a mammogram, which is about two and a half thousand in a private practice to free in a government hospital and a physical examination of the doctor, 1,000 to 2,000. But doing that once in a year, you know, I think spending three, 4,000 for your breast, um, which is like the commonest cancer, I think it's worth it. You know, we spend 3000 just going to a small restaurant on our dinners, you know. There we never think about it. You, you agree with me, Mr. Maheshwari, that it's, a, it's, the, it's the mind. It's the mind and it's the thought. And let's keep hammering the fact that uh, breast cancer is the commonest and early diagnosis can be done and you can be cured. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. We have a question from an anonymous attendee. Um, what if there's one lump in one of the breasts, but no changes to the breast size or shape um, when uh, near period, like one week before period, the breast feels tender and big, but after the period, the lump reduces, but it's still there. Is it a possibility of breast cancer? Actually, um, if you are young, and you're having your periods. So younger the age, less the risk of breast cancer. And if you have a lump that becomes a smaller, it's not cancer. So, you know, the cancer can never become smaller because cancer, the cells continue to increase. And so it continues, unless you, your, you know, your mind says, no, it's smaller, but then you can feel it every two weeks, you know. But if you're sure it comes just before the periods and it becomes smaller after the periods, then it's not a cancer. You, you, you know, it's common sense that uh, something that becomes smaller or disappears is, is not likely to be cancer. But if you are around 40, just go and have a checkup by a doctor. Thank you. Uh, there's a question about uh, for somebody who's had uh, 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 cancer and whose family has had breast cancer and if the child is less than 30 is there still need for a mammogram uh, every year mm -hmm. from New York? That, mm -hmm. that's actually uh, mr maheshwari whosoever asked this is like i can talk to them but that's a another um, um, online discussion about uh, the hereditary part of it, how it can be passed from mothers to the daughters to the granddaughters. Uh, that's called BRCA1, BRCA2 genes that Angelina Jolie had. You know, Angelina Jolie had bilateral right. mastectomies and bilateral oophorectomies because her mother had this gene. So if there is a gene present in the person who had the cancer. If the mother has this gene, then there is a high chance that the daughter will get it and they should start getting mammograms done from the age of 30. If that BRCA gene is present and there is a blood test which can show you whether you have that gene or not. 
And what is the test that is there so that for the benefit of people who would like B, to know? Uh, it's called BRCA1 and BRCA2. And which is available at most... Uh, Diagnosis available lab. in most big hospitals. They have a tie up with the molecular labs in the country, and it's by a technology called NGS, next generation sequencing. And they can just take and take a small five mil of your blood and they can give you the result. So if you have a strong family history, please get this test done in the person who's having the cancer. And if that person has the gene, then there is a very likelihood that the children might have the gene. All right. Thank you. Uh, doctor, there's a question from someone who says, can the cancer be passed on from a mother to her male son? Yes, sure. Similarly. So as I said, if this gene is present in the mother, um, there are two... Um, in one chromosome, there are uh, two strands, two strands. Okay. One of the strand is defective. So the mother can pass that defective strand to 50% of her children because those strands are there. So kabhi ye strand um, jata hai, uh, son mein kabhi wo strand jata hai. So she can pass it on to the males also. So if the mother has this gene defective, the son can also have the defective genes. And if the son has it, he has a higher risk of breast cancer, pancreatic cancer, and prostate cancer. And you know, prostate cancer is a common cancer in males. So, yes, the males can also have the defective gene. Uh, in fact, we have a few questions on prostate cancer. I am uh, uh, not going to be able to ask those questions here. Uh, but we will do a session separately for prostate cancer as well. Yes. Uh, right now, we will focus on breast cancer. But of course, there's a question from um, uh, uh, from, um, from someone. I was almost going to take the name. I should not do that. Uh, how long does it take for the side effects to reduce for a senior citizen post 12 to 15 rounds of chemo? Yes, yes. I agree uh, that chemotherapy... Uh, does have side effects and um, the older you are the more comorbidities like the blood pressure sugar and other things you have you can have side effects um, but if the chemo is going to give you more chances of a cure we push the people to have it now today a good medical oncologist can plan the chemotherapy in small doses also. Instead of giving three weekly, say the dose is uh, 300 milligrams three weekly, we can give 100 milligram weekly so that you don't have side effects. So while taking the chemotherapy, side effects can be reduced and counseling, you know, putting your hand on the shoulder of the patient and saying, you know, we are with you. You have any side effects, please. I'm talking of acute toxicities, you know, nausea, vomiting, feeling weak, not feeling up to it, not feeling hungry. So that little counseling and little positive approach. And you have to think yourself and say, it's a short period of chemotherapy. If this is going to make me live a good life, let me take it. Let me just say myself, I am well, I am well, I am well. Now, the longer side effects, most, most chemotherapies for breast cancer, there are no side effects, but there is one side effect called a neuropathy. You know, you feel numbness in your hands and in the tips of your toes. That usually doesn't have a medicine but it decreases over a period of time. But for that also, we have uh, some kind of uh, holistic, uh, I mean, I have with somebody, uh, uh, you know, concentrating uh, in a, uh, there is a methodology which can reduce the side effects. And it's like uh, no drugs and no pricks and no nothing. So uh, peripheral neuropathy is something that uh, is difficult uh, to handle. Uh, but I would advise if any senior person 
has the peripheral neuropathy while getting chemotherapy. Say you're supposed to get bara cycles. And on the eight cycles, if you have this numbness, please tell your doctor. They can stop this and they can replace it with something else. I mean, this is the most effective, but they can replace it. So whatever symptoms you're having, please tell your doctor what symptoms you have. And they can you know, change and they can replace and they can decrease the dose. Because what today we want, that the people should have a good quality of life. There's no point in living if you're living on the bed, and you know, you're bedridden and you don't know how to pass your urine and stool. There's no point in having that kind of life, you know. Uh, that kind of life which has been made by the doctors you know but we should not really make your quality of life bad so you know it's the, it's the interaction between the patient and the doctor doctor there's a question uh, it's not exactly from a senior citizen but uh, is that uh, my wife had breast cancer at the age of 40 and uh, she is now 55 and uh, it has been cured and she has not been getting her uh, regular checkups done. Is there something that one needs to be doing and one needs to be careful about? Yes, it's a good question. Um, as we said that a family history is a risk factor. So if you have, if a woman has breast cancer on one side, it's a risk factor for the opposite side. Matta jis bhi karan se breast cancer aapko hua hai, wo karan to body mein hai. Hame to pata nahi wo kya karan hai. Abhi tak logo ko nahi pata. Abhi tak nahi pata kaun sa gene kab kharaab hota hai. You know, apart from one gene. So, um, that risk factor is there. So, you are at a higher risk for the opposite side breast cancer. So, for that, one should go for a regular yearly mammogram. Um, cure, of course, if you're cured, if the doctor has said, uh, you know, there is a certain kind of breast cancer, if you don't have it for three years, we think it won't come back. But for another cancer, second cancer in the opposite breast, you should go for a checkup. In any case, after the age of 50, 55, a health checkup to hone which should include a mammogram, and, and an ultrasound of the breast and ultrasound of the pain. You know, a health checkup, to hum log, aajkal, we push people to have a health checkup. This may blood pressure, sugar, hemoglobin, and mammogram and cervical pap smear for the cervix is a part of that well women checkup. Right. So any Thank hospital you. will have a well women checkup available. Thank you. We have a question from uh, one of our regular. Uh, attendees. Doctor, can senior citizen not opt for ultrasound instead of mammography yearly? Till what age should we uh, uh, mm -hmm. should we in our 70s continue doing mammograms, mammography? And is it also true that eating red meat is bad for all cancers? Yes. Um, first of all, uh, I agree red meat um, daily consumption too much of consumption every other day consumption is not good i mean if you take it once in two weeks it's okay you know but uh, give more importance to the red meats which is the fish and the chicken if you are a non-vegetarian so red meat is bad um uh, coming to um Sorry, the question, question about ultra, uh, ultrasound. ultrasound. Yes, actually, the American Cancer Society do recommend not doing mammograms after the age of 70. If you have lots of comorbidities, you know, 70 person age of 70 may look like 60 or 70 may look like 80. So if you're 70 looking like 80, you need not do the mammogram because your life expectancy, we think, is like you know lesser but if you're looking young and healthy doing everything 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 if you can do everything you can go out for dinners you can go out for social evenings you can go out for pictures uh, mammogram i feel should be done i am 75 plus 
I go for my mammogram every year. And one time they said, Isme kuch nazar aara hai. let's do an MRI. So let's just do it now. Why should I have sleepless nights? You know, so I did tell myself, Agar hoga, to main kya karungi? maybe I roamed the entire world. Kaha jaungi, kaise jaungi. But fortunately, it was nothing. But kuch hai, to accept it because I do not know why this happens. Agar nahi hai, to have a good sleep. So just do it if you are young and healthy. Okay, if you are saying that you don't know why it happens, <laughs> then you can imagine for uh, <laughs> what for the lay public what it means. Nee, nee, कैंसर का नाम लेने से फिकर तो सबको होता है कि मैं आई एम लिविंग अ गुड हेल्दी लाइफ आई एम गोइंग आउट आई एम वर्किंग आई एम ऑन द नेट एंड इफ आई हैव कैंसर द लाइफ इज गोइंग टू चेंज कंप्लीटली बट जस्ट सेइंग दैट जस्ट विशिंग इट्स नॉट देयर इट्स नॉट द राइट वे टू टेक यू कैन पॉंडर यू कैन feel bad for it for a year 10 days or two weeks but please go and have a check up if you have any symptoms of any cancer you know uh, breast cancer of course for females uh, we have a question from someone who's asked what if the patient does not want to have chemotherapy is there any other therapy that uh, a person can take hmm. yes today um Today, for uh, so-called, uh, you know, for for common people, cancer is like cancer breast. But for us, it's three different types. And one type of breast cancer, which is hormone positive. Um, and if you're old, even if you have lymph nodes involved, you need not take the chemotherapy. It does not help. So just the tablets alone. That's hormone receptor positive. In hormone receptor negative, instead of taking the 16 cycles, you could just opt for four cycles also. You know, uh, um, what I'm trying to say is that the good medical oncologist um, should be talking straight to the patient and the relation and discussing all the possibilities and take their mind view. Of course, get the myths sorted out if they have the myths that side effects and that the doctor should say Kuch nahi hoga. Hoga to hum band kar try to karo you know if you have a mind block right from the beginning nothing can happen so it's just a good medical oncologist with a good frank talk to the patient would help you in choosing no chemotherapy in certain kind of cancers but certain kind we just got to give it thank you there's a question about is uh, hand swelling common after uh, mastectomy after the lymph nodes are removed and how do we cure it yes uh, 20 to 25 percent of the women where the lymph nodes are removed do get a swelling of the arm good question and um, that swelling of the arm, there are reasons why it happens because the lymphatics go and meet the one from the breast. And um, once we know that this woman has a higher chance or a higher uh, risk of getting the swelling, we start their prophylactic treatment right in the beginning which is like massages going from the hand to over there because we are then pushing the fluid in the lymphatics to the heart. Uh, massages and even at night putting the compression bandage because once the bandage compresses, it compresses the lymphatics and certain exercises of the arms. So we... Um, today, the doctors are very aware and I, as I said, Quality of life today, we are recognizing that quality of life is important. So that even swelling of the arm is, you know, big swelling of the arm could be a bad quality. So we start their prophylactic supportive treatment right from the beginning. The surgery is done in these people with high risk. Doctor, we have two more questions. I, I know we are already at... Uh... 
10 minutes to five, but just two more questions I will ask you. One is, doctor, you mentioned about uh, dietary habits and no junk food. And uh, uh, you also mentioned red meat uh, having once in two weeks. That's practically very difficult to achieve, doctor. How do we ensure that, uh, you know, we, we manage to have the cake and eat it too? Right. No, I agree with you. I mean, when I look at my children who are now, you know, 45s and 50s, um, of course, uh, they are non-vegetarians. They have, we cook this, we cook this, they went out. So, and, uh, you know, sweets and everything else. But, you know, to be uh, today, um, the children are much, much more intelligent than what we were in the past. They know exactly what is good for them, what's not good for them. Just to keep it in mind that this is not very healthy for me. Just put it in your mind, you know. And I'm sure you would, at certain times, you would say, you know, let's not eat the red meat. Let's get on to the chicken. or biryani kabhi khani ya kha sakte ho. But Eating it, you know, I mean, what I mean to say is just be aware. Just uh, put it in your mind that these are good things. These are not good things. And, you know, if you, if you, I mean, one woman told me, okay, I cut the fruits and I put it on the dining table before even the khana comes. And everybody has to finish that plate of, you know, fruits and all that. So these small, small little things, uh, more vegetables, more fruits, more legumes. We know Ajkal Dale, Chane, and all those things are very good. So, you know, even the food in the restaurant is made like uh, fat free and less fat and all that. So, I mean, just have to be aware. I know it's difficult, uh, Mr. Maheshwari. It is difficult, but uh, to be aware, of course, uh, will help, you know. You know, matlab ke ye hai ke, ab, uh, I mean, we can say ke kuch nahi hoga, I should be all right, I want to eat, I want to enjoy myself, I want to have a good life. But ye bhi to hai ke, hume advice kara gaya ke good health ke liye, in pe bhi thoda thoda dhyan dena chahiye, you know. Absolutely, absolutely, doctor. And I think, uh, you know, what you said is 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 is, is absolutely, uh, you know, well said. And I'm sure this message has gone down. Most most of our doctors who come here for the health life session say that the the the, the need for good diet and good uh, health practices. And I'm sure uh, uh, the same is 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 true for this also. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Dr. Sareen for having come here uh, and uh, shown us this excellent film and uh, uh, you know it, it is amazing and, and, and we all hope and of course we have a lot of people who are uh, uh, you know as the same age as, as yours or perhaps even older and it's really amazing that people like yourself are, are, are so active and are uh, you know help uh, 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 you know, through your NGOs, etc., cetera, uh, and, and, and help in spreading the message. Uh, we'll be happy to do that at any time for your NGO and for, uh, 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 you know, for the Apollo uh, Cancer Centers, which is doing some great work. Uh, thank you once again. And uh, uh, for your time, uh, Dr. Ramesh Sareen, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. And I think sometimes, you know, um, I mean, I'm not very good, but that mental strength, that so-called spirituality, so-called being grateful, being compassionate, being joy, being, being happy is a state of mind. So if you do want, that's needed today, not for older people, but even for younger people, I feel. So if you want any time, I am a great uh, follower of Brahm Kumaris and Sister Shivani comes for a lot of our meetings. So you know, I'm just saying it, you know, for your seniors, if they want that mental strength, you know, ke, kabhi -kabhi hota hai ke kya fayda zinda rehne ka, main kya kar rahi hon, you know, so for that, those points of low um, positivity, you need to be told, tell yourself, you know, I'm doing and, a great job. In fact, what we also do is, uh, uh, Dr. Sarin, through the week, we do a variety of sessions, uh, uh, 
as part of Seniors Today, and uh, <clears throat> we do some sessions on meditation, yoga, etc. Uh, in fact, as I was mentioning to you before the session started, we have uh, we do a session we do uh, we do something called Seniors Have Talent, which is open to only uh, seniors above sixty years, and we are now getting into the seventh season, and which is starting tomorrow. So tomorrow, eleven a.m. is when Group A of Seniors Have Talent season seven starts, and uh, uh, next week once again we'll be here at five p.m. on Saturday with uh, the next session of uh, Health Live at Seniors Today. We have uh, a, a, a leading neuro uh, <coughs> uh, surgeon who's going to be here next week. Uh, as always, please do follow our social handles for details of the session. And of course, many of you are regulars and uh, who have come here in the past as well. Thank you very much once again, Dr. Sarin. Thank you very much. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Mr. Maheshwar. Okay.